Okay, hi there, welcome to a second video on the issue of plastic packaging and in particular the new tax that arrives in the UK in April of 2022. Uh, there's nearly 5 million tonnes of plastic used every year in the UK, <clears throat> nearly half of which is packaging, and the majority of which does not uh, go into recycling and things. It ends up in landfill, it doesn't decompose. And clearly there were big external costs from the pollution of soils and rivers and oceans, damage to natural habitat, as well as damage to, to human health as well. That said, single-use plastic does have some external benefits, in, in particular making a contribution towards increasing the longevity of food, uh, so food safety, food hygiene, and it's a lightweight, cheap material, so the packaging weight is lower, and therefore that reduces energy and emissions that would have been generated by using alternative materials. But from April 2022, there is a new green environmental tax in the UK, the plastic packaging tax. Plastic packaging manufactured in the UK or imported into Britain which does not contain at least 30% recycled material, will be charged a tax based on weight. It'll be £200 per tonne. It's going to affect thousands of manufacturers. And of course, the aim is to increase recycled content as well as boost plastic recycling rates. It's not a tax on consumers per se. It's a tax on packaging producers. But of course, as an economist, you'll know that a tax on producers can sometimes be passed on to the final consumer. And products included in the tax include things like bottles, ready meal trays, those plastic food pouches you see all over the place, crisp packets, bin liners, disposable cups, and disposable plates and gift wrapping. So this is clearly going to affect lots of different markets. It's a tax that's on the very near horizon and one that's really interesting from an economics point of view. There's loads of sort of 25 mark questions you could set. Here's one, evaluate the case for the government taxing manufacturers who use plastic packaging. In a similar vein, to what extent is a tax on plastic packaging the best intervention to correct for market failures? Assess the likely effects of a new tax on plastic packaging. Now, there are three titles. I could have chosen more. I'm going to pick the third one and just work through an essay plan with you. A little walkthrough. It's not a perfect answer, but hopefully uh, a good one. And when it says likely effects, of course, that opens up lots of different avenues for your analysis. What happens to uh, the costs, revenues and profits of manufacturers that use plastic packaging? What about alternative companies that recycle or producers of substitute goods like compostable cups and things? Uh, the effect could be about the extent to which the tax will help correct for market failures. What are the effects on consumers, including their own economic welfare? And what's the effect on government? In a 25 market, just choose two separate effects. Build a knowledge application analysis paragraph for each, a KA paragraph, then evaluate in turn and come to a final reasoned judgment. So let me walk you through an answer. It's not a perfect one, but hopefully it's a good one, a solid answer that would score well. First paragraph, KA number one. One impact of a new plastic packaging tax is that it's likely to help correct for some of the external costs from plastic waste, which is a major cause of market failure. A tax on these companies will increase their variable costs and lead, other things being the same, to an increase in average and marginal cost. Depending on the price elasticity of demand, this is likely to cause a fall in profits, uh, which in theory creates a financial incentive for these firms to find ways to lower the amount of plastic used or switch to packaging sources that use more recycled content. So the aim of a tax is to help correct for some of the external costs and, and address the market failure issue. Of course, external costs damage third parties, but the consumer and producer don't necessarily have to pay, meaning that output, market output Q1 will be too high relative to the social optimum Q2. And in the case of negative production externalities, pack plastic packaging being a, a case in point, the market price will therefore be too low, leading to a deadweight loss of social welfare equal to the area ABC. So the intervention of the plastic tax on producers increases their costs. There we are, MPC plus tax, marginal private cost plus tax, which in theory takes output down back to the output Q2, which is the social optimum. Uh, the price goes up, a 
And of course, as a result, there's some tax revenue which the government might be able to use. However, whilst the packaging tax might internalise some of the external costs, one can argue that plastic is a product with mixed externalities. So without plastic packaging, food waste would increase, food IG might also suffer, and plastic is a light material which lowers the cost of transportation of products. So a £200 per tonne tax might not take these perhaps relatively small external benefits into account and risks causing a misallocation of resources, which would be an example of government failure. So the argument here is that the government might not necessarily have taken into, into account some of the external benefits of um, plastic packaging, in which case we might overtax from a, from a market failure point of view. And if the tax is set too high, is £200 per tonne too high? Non-compliance rates will increase. Non-compliance rates means people, businesses in particular, not adhering to the tax, not even reporting the amount of plastic packaging or not, not even um, registering for the tax. And that will cause increased costs for the government when it comes to enforcing the tax. And uh, here's the diagram where you just add in those external benefits a little bit. Just adding in the external benefits. You can see here on the diagram that I've added in where social benefit is now a little bit above private benefit, in which case the social optimum, instead of being Q2, is now Q3. So if you overtax, you might, um, in that sense, you might misallocate resources. Now, that is quite a complicated diagram, but don't worry if you know your externality stuff. Don't be afraid to include it. Uh, most diagrams would not have that level of developed detail and therefore you would get the higher, the highest analysis marks. My second point, a second impact on, of such a tax will be to raise prices for consumers. I'm thinking about the people who, households buying you know, ready meals and people buying whatever, takeaway coffees and things. In theory, a tax on manufacturers increases their costs and leads to an inward shift of supply. This is shown in my analysis diagram. I'll show you this in a second. If the coefficient of elasticity is low, then firms will be able to pass on this tax to the consumer. Thus, the retail price for things like processed ready meals will be expected to rise along with other food and drink. Now, this might then have a regressive effect on the distribution of income, particularly amongst lower income families, many of whom are already suffering from a cost of living crisis. Good knowledge there of what's happening in the UK at the moment. Crucially, if prices go up, the generators of the plastic pollution, the manufacturers, are not really being targeted. They're, being, they're able to pass on the tax and others are therefore paying the cost. Here's the diagram. By the way, if you've already included a market failure diagram, don't, don't feel you have to include two diagrams. A well-developed diagram is more than enough in a 25 marker. But there's cost, there's revenue, there's the initial profit maximising output Q1, price P1, cost is AC1, and therefore the firm is making a, a good profit, shown by the green area. Well, if you impose a plastic packaging tax, and packaging is a big cost of production, then marginal cost goes up to MC2, average cost shifts up as well, and as a result, the profit maximising output goes to Q2. You can raise price to P2, but the average cost is now higher. But there's the original profit was the green area. There's the new profit shown in red. So original profit, new profit. You can see that profit has gone down. And the consumer is having to pay, <coughs> pardon me, the consumer is having to pay a higher price as well. Whoops, there we go. However, second evaluation point, although prices might rise in the short term, in the long run, the main aim of the tax is to encourage manufacturers to recycle plastic and also to switch to sustainable packaging such as compostable materials, things like vegware and other, other businesses that are, are now able to provide alternatives to traditional sort of virgin plastic products. If alternative suppliers can ramp up production and achieve significant economies of scale, then the prices of those substitutes to plastic may well fall, leading to lower prices for consumers. So much depends on the price elasticity of supply of businesses that supply that sustainable packaging, the alternative, that, that won't be taxed. But if they have limited scope to expand production, 
then actually a packaging tax might be ineffective and lead to higher prices, even for sustainable packaging. Again, there's a diagram you could draw there because the demand for sustainable packaging is going to go up. Can you, can you visualise a shift in the demand or the revenue curves? And if they have fairly limited supply side capacity, the prices of those sustainable packaging uh, items uh, will go up. And so therefore consumers will pay more for that as well, at least in the short term. But hopefully this tax will encourage long-term economies of scale in sustainable packaging, including compostable materials. And then having done your 2K points, your two evaluation points, you just have time hopefully for a, a short final reason judgment. The packaging tax, I would argue, is a well-intentioned environmental tax designed to address market failures from plastic pollution. The, the issues are well known. It's likely to be most effective when packaging comes from domestic sources, but there's a big risk of government failure for imported plastic packaging because businesses may decide the costs of complying are too high. If you're a UK importer of stuff that's, being, that's using plastic packaging, you have to get the information from the foreign sources about the weight of that plastic. Now, that, that is time-consuming, it's costly, it's an extra cost to trade, effectively. And many businesses will decide they're not going to be, you know, they just won't comply with this. In the long run, a tax on its own is not enough. A mix of interventions is needed to achieve significant cuts in plastic packaging. So this is the old argument that a tax, one intervention on its own, is probably not going to be as effective as a combination of incentives. For example, tax relief on research and development might yield the best results, as companies such as Nestle and Starbucks showing social corporate responsibility uh, by investing, uh, investing money in new materials, which they are doing, by the way, where the plastic footprint is much smaller. What I've tried to do there in the last paragraph is not necessarily repeat existing points. Try to say something fresh, come to an overall balanced view if you can. There we go. Thanks for joining in on this one, by the way. Huge thanks. Uh, this is a new tax coming into the UK in 2022. It might be on the examiner's um, uh, radar. Who knows? Uh, the tax has been around, the plan for the tax has been around for a few years. But it's a good example of an intervention in the market. And it's one that you can apply your microeconomics to pretty well. Well, again, great to see you all. Stay safe. Stay curious. See you again sometime soon.